It was this song, Release Me, that made him an international success, and almost by accident. It was a London stage in 1967, and a performer called in sick. The fill-in was a young man named Engelbert Humperdinck. He got a standing ovation that night, and the applause has lasted almost 25 years. When he met and married Patricia Healy in 1963 and began to raise a family, Engelbert had nothing. Work was scarce, and for a while, he was even on welfare. The Engelbert Humperdinck Show, starring Engelbert Humperdinck. But from that first appearance in 1967, it took only three years before Engelbert Humperdinck had his own television show. On that show, he appeared with some of the biggest names in show business, including this one, one of his all-time favorite performers, Jerry Lewis. Can you save me? Not as an actor, no. It's getting very warm. Would you mind awfully if I just uh, disrobed a little bit? His obvious sex appeal on stage has won him a legion of female fans. And now those fans make up over 250 fan clubs throughout the world. And he never lets them down, as he continues to turn them on while taking it off. Although he admits to having been with many women in his life, it is his wife of 28 years and four grown children who now manage to take up most of his time off the road. And when it comes to staying at home, what more impressive place to do it than here at his mansion in Beverly Hills? Once owned by actress Jane Mansfield, this pink palace still has the one heart-shaped design left on the estate, this swimming pool. The success of Engelbert Humperdinck is obvious, but as our correspondent Jennifer Vallopi found out, there was a lot more to Engelbert than the glamour of his pink palace. There were also the memories of a time and a career which hasn't always been easy. Engelbert Humperdinck, king of romance. Is that the image you created for yourself, the image your manager created? Uh, he didn't give me that title. The fans gave me that title. I think I've always been uh, singing romantic songs, you know, mm -hmm. and, that's, and it sort of stamped my style. And they, they just tagged me king of romance. Why do you think you have so many fans? 252 fan clubs yeah. worldwide. Around the world, yeah. And I've been told that's more than any other singer. That's right. Have you ever kept track of the number of marriage proposals you've gotten? I don't know. I can't answer that question. There's a lot of... <laughs> there's a lot of... Yeah, some people are, are genuinely like me, and uh, but there's some people out there who think they're married to me. When are you coming home? The kids are waiting for you, and all this <laughs> business, you know. Some really uh, crazy ones, but uh, the majority of them are great. How old were you when you actually got your first big break? I got my first break in show business as Jerry. My name was Jerry. Oh, I changed my name to Jerry because I was always a little bit of a... I used to fool around a lot and do impressions and things. And my favorite right. impression was Jerry. And that's so people started to call me Jerry. Jerry Lewis. Jerry Lewis, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, Jerry, wonderful person. He's the poison that's wonderful. I like him very much. Anyway, I used to do that, you know. <laughs> it's very good. And, uh, and so they called me Jerry. So I started to sing under the name of Jerry Dorsey. I did very well. And after two years, uh, I got sick. I got tuberculosis, and I was in bed for six months on my back because yeah. there was no cure in those days, you know, as, my, as, yeah. as there is today. And um, I took a year off from the business, and when I came back, you bet your life I couldn't get a job. What happened? How bad did it get? Very bad. I, I, I hit rock bottom, and uh, I lost my car, and uh, I lost the house that my parents had bought for my parents. Sometimes I'd get a job and I'd go out and I'd sleep in the street and I'd sleep in a telephone box. If it was snowing, I'd get into, into a public convenience and close the door, you know, and put my collar up and sleep in there with my case under my legs. There were very rough times. You seem to be such a calm and, and peaceful man, yet you have so much energy on stage. You loosen your tie, you unbutton your shirt, the women scream, they throw their underwear at you. How do you keep your ego in check through all this? I don't know. I think I've never, I, I've never had a very big ego. I can put it on a level of being confident, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, although I'm not that confident when I'm not on stage. And when I'm on stage, I get that confidence. It comes from somewhere. I don't know where. But off stage, I'm quite a, basically a very shy person. If, if we believe what we read, um, you've been quite a woman chaser, or chasey, as the case may be. 
Um, is that all behind you now? First of all, is it true? Yeah, I, I guess it is. <laughs> is it all behind Who you Who knows? Now? I mean, I, yes, I, I, would, I would hope so. You've been married for almost 30 years. In that time, have you hurt your wife? Oh, uh, yeah, I would say so. Several times, and I'm, I, I'm obviously sorry about it, you know, but things happen, and, uh, you know, you can't, uh, you can't stop them sometimes. Yes, I've made my mistakes, and I have, I, I have hurt her, and um, she's a great lady. She stood by me. But what can you do? I mean, I, I, you know, we've had our ups and downs in our marriage. We really have. It's been tough, you know, when the temptations are strong, and sometimes you get lured into a situation that you can't get out of. Uh, in, in a recent article, one of the things it said was that you were um, really trying to woo your wife again after uh, 28 years of marriage. Is that going on? Is there a whole new romance starting up? I hope so. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I'd like to think that that's what's happening at this present time. I mean, I am a romantic, uh, a, a, a romantic thinker, you know, and uh, I, I just want, to, I just want the rest of my life to be really smooth. Um, you've had a few paternity suits against you. Yeah, but uh, as my wife says, you know, they they serve anybody who's any in any position. They you always get a. Uh, those sort of things happening to you. Mm -hmm. Somebody want a father for a child? Oh, get humping. He's all right. He's around. He's okay. And you feel you've been wrongly accused? I think so. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I'm not going to say I'm the great innocent, as I said before. I'm not, no. But I think at times there's been the wrong fingers pointed. You and your wife have four children. Mm -hmm. And um, what kind of father do you think you've been to them? I think I'm a good father. I think um, I've, I've brought them up, uh, my wife and I have brought them up in extremely well and very respectful. Mm -hmm. you know. I think I took a leaf out of my mom and dad's book. Were you very close to your parents? Extremely. Uh, when mom and dad were alive, I would, I would, uh, I used to work two weeks on and two weeks off. And no matter where I was in the world, the day I stop working, I get on a plane and fly back home to Leicester. But I tried to spend as much time with them because they were getting on an age. And, uh, and the last four years of my mother's life, she went blind. And I'd spend time with her, and then I'd go away, and I'd call her the next day. I always called them every day. And she'd say to me, when are you coming home, son? And as soon as she said that, uh, I mean, um, I used to get very emotional, and, and I said, Ma, I only just left, you know. She says, yeah, but when are you coming back? And I used to take my breath away, you know. Do you think uh, the little Dorsey kid, as he was sitting there dreaming and, and fantasizing about uh, the wonderful life he was going to have, ever really believed for a minute that it would work out this well? I think I've had a great life at it, so if anything did happen, and for some reason that, you know, God took my voice away and I couldn't sing anymore. I would say I've had a wonderful life.